And peace and love, black family. Peace and love to the black gods. I hope all is well with all of you out there. Um, oh my goodness, I miss y'all so, so, so much. <laughs> Just the energy and love, um, I feel so deprived of. Um, as some of you may know, I had a gag order placed on me by a family court judge. And that is the reason for my um, extensive hiatus. But um, I'm officially back now, y'all. Um, the gag order was placed not only on me, but this is how ridiculous it is. It was placed on my family as well. The family court judge told me that if myself or anyone from my family posted on social media about my case, that I would lose permanent custody of my children, who at that time I had already lost temporary custody of. So, um, technically, that order has not been rescinded. So, technically, by me making this video and posting it, me and my children are still at risk. Um, for those of you who don't know, I kind of just said it. I did get my children back. They have been returned to me. Um, I have full custody again, like I had for their entire lives. So that's a blessing. Thank you all so, so, so much for your love and for your support and for the donations that I received. Um, it helped out tremendously. I was able to pay um, my lawyers. Well, in the beginning, I had like two or three different lawyers, um, which I did waste a lot of money on, but it was all learning experience. I do have an excellent attorney now. Um, let me plug for him real quick. Matthew Elbert, excellent attorney. If anyone has a family court or criminal court case, 716-445-4119. Um, but yes, I have full custody of my children back. They are currently being homeschooled. Um, never to return to school again. Unless it's a independently owned black school. Then they will not be returning. Trust and believe that. Um, homeschooling is going very well. Um... What else? Just to update you all on um, my cases, as you all know, I had two or three criminal cases pending this year. Um, all of those have been dropped, dismissed. Um, so I still came out squeaky clean. No criminal record. As y'all know, before this year, 2017, before all this homeschooling fiasco, I had never been arrested in my entire life. Um, no criminal background. Um, they tried to get me one though. <laughs> they tried very hard. But I, I came out squeaky clean. No record. All criminal charges have been dropped. Um, but I do have to do community service. And I have to pay some court fines about um, $250, $300, something like that. Um... What else? Um, oh my goodness. So much, so many things transpired. I, I can't fit it all into this video. So after this, I will be doing um, a Q&A video. Anybody who has questions, um, inbox me or comment on this video. I'll answer like five, ten questions um, of specific things that transpired. Anything y'all want to know, I'll, um, I'll put it out there because my whole entire case has been public. I mean, from day one, when I found out what was going on with me, I immediately made my shit public. No secrets, no skeletons in the closet, nothing like that. Everything on Front Street. So anything y'all want to know about my case, um, like I said, comment on here or send me a message. And I'll answer the questions because I want to keep this video uh, relatively short. <laughs> um, just to let y'all know, I truly believe, like, in my heart and my spirit, 
if it wasn't for y'all, you, the people who are watching this right now, I would not have my children back. I just wouldn't. Um, basically, my case, you know, it just went too public. You know, videos went viral. And you all, the people, demanded answers. Y'all wanted to know what the fuck was going on. Why did y'all, you know, why were my children being held hostage? You all made these people accountable. And they couldn't take the heat. They couldn't stand up to the pressure. They had no choice but to get my kids back. Um, it may seem like they were gone for a long time. They were gone for several months. To some of y'all, y'all were like, what's going on? Yes, yeah, she should have been having her children back. Y'all don't understand this wicked, wicked system. Um, my case was uh, pretty much unprecedented. Like, when they take children, they don't give them back. Like, the minimum time the children have to be gone is... Mm. I'm sorry, <laughs> the phone is um, beeping. But the minimum time for children to be gone is six months. And the way their system works, this is just protocol. This is what happens with every single case. If they remove children from a home, they're gone for a minimum of six months. And during that six months, um, the parent has to do a series of, of, of the hoops they have to jump through. They have to go to mental health evaluation. They have to go to counseling. They have to go to domestic violence classes, they have to go to uh, drug and rehab classes, and this was all shit they were trying to make me do. Um, and mind you, these classes have to be done consecutively, and most of them take, you know, three, four months to do, and you have to do them all in a row, so most of the time, people don't even get their kids back in that six months, because they're not, um, within that time frame, they haven't had a chance to complete all these classes and, 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 and programs that they were required to complete in order to get their children back. But with me, I didn't have to wait that six months. My babies were gone for like four months. And I didn't have to go through any of that shit to get my children back. So, and that's the thing that they were the most angry about. Y'all have to understand what really went down inside this agency, this government agency. Heads went rolling in that bitch. Y'all have to understand that. Like, people who worked for that agency were so, so, so angry that my children came home. There was people who actually quit their job, who worked for this, this county agency, this Child Protective Services. They actually quit their job because my children came home. That's how angry they were because, um... Basically, we had to go above their heads. These these workers, these social workers, and these um, county attorneys, we had to go over their head. And um, see, when these people are out on the field, they have this overinflated sense of um, sense of authority. You know, they think they're God. They forget that they're just workers. They're just subordinates. <laughs> so when their boss came in. And, um, quote-unquote, stepped on their toes and said, y'all got to give these Harris kids back. Hands, hands off these Harris kids. They were infuriated. People quit their job. There was people that got fired from their job. So much shit went down with my case. Um, there was workers, like I said, who quit. They got orders of protection against me. Okay, y'all came in, invaded my home, kidnapped my children, threw me in jail, but then y'all want to order protection against me? What did I do? Like, that's how afraid they were because I just had so much public support. I had so many people out there ready to ride for me. Um, they were afraid. They didn't know what to do. Um, like I said, they didn't want to give my kids back. It basically implicated them and basically said that they were wrong because you out all my criminal charges dropped. And then on top of that, y'all returning my children to me in the, the six-month time frame didn't pass. And I didn't do any of these, you know, required classes. So that's basically saying that I wasn't a problem in the first place. If I was a problem in the first place, if I neglected my children in the first place, you know, I would have had to go through all these classes and training and programs in order to get my babies back. So basically implicated that you know implicated them that they did wrong in the beginning 
by taking my children that they made a mistake and fucked up so that's why they were so angry and also like i said for them this was personal this was very very personal they wanted to adopt my children out they wanted me to never see my children again that was their plan they had already submitted paperwork for me to lose permanent custody and for my parental rights to be terminated and um for my children to be adopted out into the system that's what they wanted so when that didn't happen um it just got very real like heads went rolling in that bitch heads went rolling in that agency but like i said it was because of you all y'all demanded answers y'all wanted to know what was going on and why my children had been kidnapped um what else basically this whole year yeah 2017 my occupation has been going to court basically i've been to court this year at least at least 60 times and um at least yeah because i had the criminal cases oh that's what I wanted to tell y'all. My family court case is still open, y'all. A lot of y'all think that, you know, everything's over and done with because I got my children back. No. <laughs> they don't want to take their claws out of me and my babies. Um, I can't make this shit up, y'all. This shit is just so crazy. The case is still open. I still have Child Protective Services coming to my house um, to check on me and my children. And check this out, y'all. I have to go to trial. Yep. Next week, I'm going to trial. Um, basically, they wanted me to plead guilty to educational neglect. They wanted me to say um, that my paperwork was um, late. So, they wanted me to plead guilty to that. <laughs> um, excuse me, y'all. Y'all already know how... <laughs> I already know my answer to that like y'all don't put me through all this shit and now y'all want me to plead guilty so that you know y'all could just sweep my shit under the rug like look see she was guilty y'all we had reason to do everything we did to her and her babies wrong <laughs> we're going to trial because what y'all have to understand is that everything that they did to me and my children they did it all based off of allegations I was never convicted of anything. There was never anything proven in the court of law. There was no due process. There was no there was no um there was no proof. There was no evidence. There was no any of that. It was a hundred percent pure allegations. So just off that they were able to do everything they did. They were able to come kick my door down. They were able to come uh, invade my home multiple times, kidnap my children, throw me in jail. They were able to impound my vehicle. They were able to do all this crazy shit to me, 100% based off allegations. This is supposed to be America. You're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. I was never proven guilty of a goddamn thing to this very day, but they were still able to do all this to me. That's the part that's so, like, y'all should be infuriated that they can't that they can violate somebody's constitutional rights like this like coming to their vehicle coming to their home take their children um uh, hold them all based off allegations none of their statements have ever been cross-examined there's never been any proof any documentation submitted 100 percent, everything they said about me was alleged and they were still able to do everything they did so that should be, as an American citizen, I mean, whether you like me or not, my ideology, what I stand for, the way I speak, any of that, that should, that's not even relevant. What's relevant is how they, how they violated my constitutional rights. And, you know, as it's been said throughout history, uh, um, what do they say? I believe it's um injustice anywhere is a is a threat to justice everywhere for the simple fact that if they did it to me that means they can do it to you that means it's only a matter of time before it comes to your doorstep 
Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, so yeah, basically, they're like, oh, basically, take this plea deal, plea guilty, and we'll give you an ACD. I'm like, fuck no. Everything y'all did, y'all had no proof and no rights to do it, so... Now y'all gonna have to prove it. The burden of proof is on y'all. Now y'all gotta come to court. All y'all statements have to be cross-examined. Y'all gotta bring in evidence to 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 um to prove everything that y'all said thus far. And y'all can't do it. So they try to intimidate me. They they're like, oh, we have eight police officers and six other witnesses that are gonna come to trial and testify against you. I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> bring them. Mind you. I'm going to trial for educational neglect, so how can eight police officers testify against me in an educational neglect case? What the fuck do these police officers know about homeschooling or education? This shit just don't add up. So, um, yeah, my trial date is set for next week. I believe it's Thursday. Um, I still owe a balance to my lawyer, y'all. It's only a few hundred dollars, but I'm trying to get that paid off so that he can come and represent me if y'all can help me out financially um like I said I have the court fees from the other criminal case and I have um the lawyer fees from this family court case I need in total probably about six hundred dollars so if you know a hundred people watching this can send me six dollars each that will really get me through this and um there's so much more I want to say, but I got to wrap this up. My video is getting long again. It's about to be 17 minutes. I'm going to do a follow-up, y'all. I'm definitely going to keep y'all updated. I'm not going to disappear again, trust me. They're not putting no more gag orders on me. I'm I'm speaking. I'm going to speak about my case. Y'all going to know everything that goes on. After I go to trial, making a video, y'all going to know everything step-by-step step that, that happened. Oh, y'all going to know about the past shit, too, because I... <laughs> I got the transcripts from from the past, all of these past court proceedings. I got the transcripts, y'all. Y'all gonna see why they really took my kittens. I'm gonna upload all of this. Um, if there's anybody out there, I'm not that uh, savvy with technology, but if there's anybody out there who could help me make these videos, because I want to put the transcripts and the court papers up, like maybe do a double screen, have my face here and the court papers here, something like that, so y'all can see line for line what they said and what was talked about and how they perjured themselves in court and just lied, blatant lies. And they tell on themselves, like, right, this shit is crazy. I can't make this shit up, y'all, but I got so much more to tell y'all. I might have to write a book or make a documentary or a Lifetime movie or something because this shit that they put me through is just that unbelievable. Um, The last thing I want to close out with, y'all, just... Just remember, please don't forget what they did to my children. They put my children in in an in institution. They were not even in a foster home. My babies were in an institution for juvenile delinquents. When they took my children, the first thing they're supposed to do when they take children is put them with the other parent, like the father. They didn't even call the father and try to put them with him. They refused to place my children with my mom or any of my family. <clears throat> they took my children and put them in an institution where they were with juvenile delinquents. My daughter was eight years old. They had her living in the same dormitory as 15, 16, 17 year old boys who had, um, who had like ran away from home and stole cars and, and like started fires, arson. All type of crazy shit. Y'all got my children who have no record of behavioral problems. Y'all have them in with these juvenile delinquents. And, you know, nothing against the juvenile delinquents. But I just want y'all to know how malicious this attack was on me and my children. How, how. And they let my children stay there. Court proceeding after court proceeding after court proceeding. And mind you, y'all. This judge who did remand my children into the custody of the county or of the state, I'm sorry, is the same judge that I'm going on trial in front of. Mind you, y'all, I'm not having a jury trial. I'm not being judged by a jury of my peers. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
this facade that they have us under, how, you know, we have so many rights in America and freedoms and, and constitution. No. I'm not being judged by a jury of my peers. I'm being judged by one lady. She's not my peer. She's uh, at least twice my age. She has to be in her 60s. She's not of the same race as me. And like I said, she's the same judge that I've had from day one. She's the one who who took my children out of my custody. And she's the one who um, remanded them into this institution for juvenile delinquents. She didn't even place them in a foster home with a family. And she's the one who refused to let them go with my family and who who kept them in this institution court proceeding after court proceeding after court proceeding she allowed this to go on and this is the lady who i'm going on trial in front of and this is the lady who's going to decide my fate and is going to decide whether i'm guilty or not guilty welcome to america y'all so this is what i'm facing this one i'm up against y'all um Again, just thank you so, so much. Like, words cannot even explain how grateful I am to you all, to the public, um, to those who know me and to those who don't even know me. Um, it was just tremendous, y'all. I can't, I can't put it into words. Just, I'm grateful and I'm humble and I love y'all. Um, I didn't want this video to be this long, but, um, I still got so much more to say and... I will be posting more videos, updating y'all on my trial and how that's going. And I will, like I said, do some Q&A. Um, anything y'all want to know, comment. And um, I'm going to try to answer like at least five, ten questions. Because I know I couldn't cover every, everything in this video. <laughs> Alright, I'm out, y'all. I love y'all. Peace.